Yeah, no, I think that'd work good. Listen, I gotta go. Somebody just hit my Jeep with a bunch of boxes. All right, see ya. Hi, I'm Dennis with TerraFlex. I think today would be a good day to install a big brake kit. Okay, we're ready to install our big brake kit. Now the first thing you're gonna do when you get that kit on is you're gonna jump in here and jam on that pedal just to see what it feels like, to see how those brakes feel. Well, let's try it on a stock one, see what they feel like. We start it up, let that booster go to work and that pedal goes right to the floor. Hmm. Guess what, that's probably not the best way to check and see if our brakes work. What we're gonna do is put the kit on and then we'll go out and do some stops and we'll see which one works best. This kit is really an easy install. In fact, it's so simple to install, I'm almost embarrassed to do it. Here's your brake kit. What's your name? Jenny. Jenny here can do it. How about taking that tire off for us? And let's see how easy this is. What we're gonna do is we'll have five lug nuts. Okay, you got that. Then we're gonna have two bolts on the caliper mounting bracket, two bolts on the caliper itself, and then we're gonna have one on the brake line. Jenny's going to be able to do it for us with ease, I'm sure. I'm going to walk you step by step through the installation of this kit, so it'll be pretty simple. We're going to start by undoing these. Jen, get over here. You're going to do this. Start by undoing all the lines on there that attach this ABS line to the brake lines, and then we'll be able to move the caliper up here and get it out of our way so we can get access to the rotor. Good. Let's grab that 15 millimeter end wrench, and we'll undo and just break loose that brake line. I said the 15. First thing we want to do is just loosen up this brake line a little bit. So, you know what? Here, just tap it from the top. Okay, she taps that down a couple of times. That loosens it up. Now just snug it a little. Perfect, okay. Now that that's just freed up, when we put our caliper up there, later we're going to want to disconnect that line and it'll be easy to disconnect it. We want to leave it snug right now so it doesn't leak all over the place. The next thing we're going to do is we're just going to throw a lug nut on one of these wheel studs. And the only reason we're going to do it is when we take this caliper off, that rotor could fall off and hit us in the foot. Not good. So we'll go ahead and put a, a lug nut on one of these wheel studs. Are we going to put a lug nut on the wheel stud? Okay. Yeah. You did real good, Jen. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is on the back side here, we've got two 21 millimeter bolts. So it's going to take a 21 millimeter socket and we'll just get both of those off. Uh, yeah, Jen, we're going to have to have an air gun attached to the socket. All right, good. See, everything kind of falls apart when we do that. That's hence the safety on there. All right, we're ready to take this caliper off. Jen, right behind you is a wire. Any of you that have done a JK lift have probably seen one of these before off the e-brakes on the back. But you can use a piece of mechanics wire, a zip tie, whatever. All we want to do is tie this caliper up out of the way so that we can work on the rotor down here. Go ahead and hook it to the caliper first. All right, now we'll take the whole assembly and we'll just hang it right in that hook. Good. Let's get the rotor off. That's so hard to take off with that lug nut on there, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. Good, okay.
All right. Okay, we can set that one down. The new one is right behind you on the ground there. Just set it anywhere. Great. Okay, pick that one up and let's throw it on here. Oh, that's a little heavy, huh? Try not to get your greasy hands all over the rotor surfaces. Anywhere you touch on that, you have to break clean it off and make it clean because if you get grease all over this, it'll make hard spots in it when you use your brakes. There's two sets of holes drilled in here. One for a five on five and a half bolt pattern and one for the five on five. Didn't know if you were gonna get that or not. Let's go ahead and put our lug nut back on there just for safety. Okay, rotor installed. We're ready to put on that Terraflex caliper. Before we do, let's grab these bolts. Remember the ones that we used the 21 millimeter socket on? These bolts, I call them the tightest bolts on earth. They need to be tight. We do not want our caliper falling off. So I'll put some Loctite on there just to make sure that they don't. The Loctite is in that bottle right behind you. All right, let's go ahead and put some on those threads. Um, Jen, let's open the bottle. Just pull the end of it. There. Good. Just drip some on there. Good. All right. Good, good, good. Okay. What's going to happen, this will dry onto the threads and just make it so that that bolt will not back out. You can still get it out later with a, you know, a wrench or whatever, but it just keeps it so the vibration doesn't break it loose. So we'll just apply some of that to both of them. There's the other one. Okay, perfect. And we'll just start them in the hole, just let them sit there. We're gonna need them when we slide that caliper on. Now I'll hold this rotor up. Let's grab the caliper. We'll go ahead and slide it into position here. But it's so much bigger. <laughs> it's a big brake kit, Jen. Hold it up just a little higher. I'll get that bolt started for you. There you go, perfect. Okay, we've got the lower bolt. You can slide that one in as well. Start it right there. You got it? With that top one, it'll kind of hold this very heavy caliper into position. Got it? All right, with both bolts started in there, let's grab that air gun with your 21 millimeter again and we'll just tighten these up. Now these two bolts are tight. They're 120 foot pounds of torque, so just lay into it. Hit it hard. Good. Get the next one. All right, good. Let's take a look at uh, how this caliper's on here, make sure everything's right. In the meantime, Jen, if you'd grab us a 14 millimeter and a 17, we'll to take that caliper off. While we look at this caliper, we can see that the upper bleeder is in the top, which is what we wanna see. Now, if by chance you've got them reversed, which it is possible to do, Derflex has put two ports in here, so you can actually reverse these. As long as you got the bleeder at the top, you're good. Because when we bleed it, we want to allow those bubbles to come to the surface, and then we'll let them escape here when we bleed it. You have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Yeah, we'll show you in a minute, it's all right. Okay, that's all on there. You notice we put this piston on without any brake pads in it. We did that on purpose, because it's a lot easier to put them on at this point. I mean, you can do it either way, a lower or an upper caliper bolt and either rock that piston down or lift it up. Let's just take the top one out and we'll flop it down out of the way and uh, get ready to put the pads in. So you got your 14 millimeter out here. All right, these bolts that hold this caliper on are tight. Okay, Jen, we're, you're gonna need to flip that end wrench around. That is not gonna come off. So just put the box end on it and they're locked tight it in. So you're gonna have to get all over it to get them off. Okay, get up on the end of here. Let me just get on the other edge, okay? And break them loose. Okay, see how the whole thing's spinning? See that? So you need to put your end wrench on that bolt right there on the back side of it. Okay, to hold it, good. You'll find that when you get to the end, that bolt is still not gonna come out of that piston because the Loctite is in there so much that it's gonna hold it into place. So it'll wind out and you'll still have to push it out of the way a little bit to get the caliper to slide back. All right, we'll swing the caliper out of the way now and we've got all the room in the world to put the disc pads in. Just turn it over here. These disc pads have got some blue material covering the uh, anti-rattle, anti-squeak pads on the back. Just peel that stuff off and it's ready to go. 
So let's grab one of those pads and we'll just slide them right into the caliper mount. Now these clips on the end of these are a little bit unusual maybe to some that we've seen. The clips actually catch on the outside and they hold the uh, disc pad away from the rotor. So you just slide them in and that's how they go, just like that. So go ahead and slide the one on the back side. Good, you got the blue off. Good. Okay, you notice she did one thing wrong here. We always wanna have the brake pad against the rotor and not the metal surface of the disc pad. Hello, turn it around, good, okay. Put it in. We can slide the caliper back up into position and you're gonna have to pinch these together because that's spring loading them out of the way. So we'll just kind of slide that in. And you've got these little clips that are holding, they're actually an index for the pads that you're gonna need to work those pistons past to get them on. And it'll go right on. All we need to do is retighten that caliper mount bolt. Now this, this can be kind of tricky because that bolt out here has got so much Loctite in there, sometimes it's hard to turn. So Jen, if you want, you can turn this side. So you can actually turn that one and it'll start it. And once you've got it started, just go ahead and run it tight. Um, I'm going to have her put just a little bit of Loctite on here just to replace it. There we go. We do not want those bolts coming out. There are brakes. That was good. Now remember when we originally took this caliper off, we loosened that brake line up just a little bit. We did that because when we try to take that off from where it is, everything's loose and so it, it's all moving around. But we've loosened it up so we can just break it loose. I'm going to have the washers handy that came with the kit that are going to go underneath there and that's what's going to seal it back up. We're going to have a 15 millimeter end wrench to break loose that bolt. I'm going to have a set of cutters here so that we can cut that off. There's a washer under there that we'll show you in just a second here that that really is tough to get off of those threads. So I usually just cut it off. So we'll just run this out quick. When I hung this caliper up, we did it with the brake line up high. All that's going to do is save us a little bit of mess. That brake fluid isn't going to run out of the caliper so much. It'll at least hold some of it in there. Okay, there's our bolt. That one, that one. I'm just going to pinch this to hold the brake fluid in it while we play with this other washer. This is the washer that's tough to get past those threads. So we'll just grab these cutters and just get it out of the way. Put our washer back on it. We have the one that goes on the bottom, and then we're going to just put it into position. Give it a little snug, and that should slow down our leak.